Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. Uh, we're just doing a conclusion here on the shadow government works for the Antichrist, the series that we're doing. And I guess this would be uh, part 12 of that series to close it out. And basically just a discussion, talking a little bit about the future. I, I guess I get to speculate a little bit. Uh, what the Bible says is going to happen is going to happen and what's already been fulfilled in history and verified is fulfilled in history and verified. Uh, not like the futurists who uh, have a real problem with uh, trying to put much of the history or prophecy that was given in advance and already fulfilled, still trying to put it in the future. So what they do is they tell you that there's a terrible time coming and uh, and you believe them because you haven't done the study that I've done. And, and I mean, I have studied, I've been studying uh, prophecy intently for, well, at least 14 years now. Uh, re I'm reading everything, uh, dispensational as well, all of it. But when you read the truth and you read the lies, well, then it becomes easy to understand when you're familiar with both. But basically, we need to be familiar with the truth first. And the problem with people read the Bible and they don't understand it, uh, especially prophecy. There's a lot that's hard to understand, like what are all these beasts and what do all these symbols mean? But there are keys in the text and it takes quite a bit of study. And so, and most people don't have the time to do what I've been doing for the last 14, 15 years to study it intently, to read just about everything that's ever been written about uh, prophecy and history, uh, whether it's false or, or not. I mean, you read something like, uh, like this is a good reference work here, the history of apocalyptic interpretation. And um, you can also get a free copy of this. But this was uh, taken out of the appendix of the fourth volume of of E.B. Elliot's Hori Apocalyptica. It's 250 pages. I decided, or more than 250 pages, I decided it need to be standalone. So we uh, it's offered as a supplement if you buy our uh, quincentennial, our Reformation quincentennial edition of that. Um, but you get it for free. You just go to my website, crosstheborder.org, and you can get anything there for free by clicking on the free ebook tab and asking for any of the books you see on our Lulu site or on our website um, that you would like and, and just follow the instructions there. It's subscribe to the blog, share it on somewhere. Uh, you, you can tell your mother about it or share it on Facebook. I don't care. If you say you shared it, I'll believe you. Why would you lie? <laughs> would you lie for a free book? Well, then your your word isn't worth very much. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, call someone on the phone, email someone about something, share it on your Twitter, your Facebook, just say, I shared it, and I'll believe you. Or you could say, I don't want to share it till I read it. What, you don't trust your friends? You're afraid they might be led astray because they're not as smart as you? Well, I still ask you to share it and verify that you say that you shared it. And But please, that'd be a stupid thing to lie about. Yeah, wouldn't do that. Anyway, good resource, History of Apocalyptic Interpretation. And now, in the History of Apocalyptic Interpretation, what you'll find out is that more than half of what was written about prophecy in history was wrong. <laughs> That's right. Most people were wrong about something or most things that they wrote about prophecy in the History of Apocalyptic Interpretation. But you know, when you, when you know the true, or you're looking, if you truly have the spirit of truth, by going through all this, whether it's right or wrong, you learn to discern what is true and what is not. And there are keys that are given in the revelation and in the prophecies themselves, which even the best of expositors miss because even E.B. Elliot missed some stuff. But he couldn't plainly see things that I see today, and I can see why he missed them. It's like he, uh, I don't know exactly, but it was several expositors before E.B. Elliot who started to uh, the idea that the, the two-horned earth beast and the false prophet were the same thing. 
but they're not because false prophet is, isn't even mentioned in the chapter uh, that introduces the two-horned earth beast. It's not even there. The false prophet comes later. So somehow they assume, but they're not the same thing because a beast is a beast. And a beast is, it, it can't be something other than a beast. And so we can only look at what the scripture explicitly says about beast to understand what a beast is if we're going to get our interpretation from Scripture, and then realize that whatever doesn't fit that criteria of what God is calling a beast in his prophetic uh, interpretation that we find in the Scripture, that it can't be a beast if it's not a beast. Okay, So the clergy can't be a beast, and the false prophet can't be a beast. The false prophet is the antithesis of the true prophet. The true prophet is Christ. So the false prophet is definitely the Antichrist or the man of sin. There's no doubt about it, because he takes and usurps the place of the true prophet. And and Jesus is, or was, and is that true prophet that all of the Old Testament prophets of Israel were looking forward to and exclaimed that he would come. Yeah, he was that Messiah, that true prophet, prophet of prophets that they were looking for. That was Jesus, the Messiah. When he showed up, he was that true prophet. So the false prophet must be the antithesis of the true prophet. Therefore, the false prophet is the Antichrist himself, or as Paul put it, the man of sin, if we're talking about the Antichrist, because there are many Antichrists, surely, but there is only one man of sin, or I should say only one line of the man of sin, and that is who sits in the seat of the papacy. And he's still, uh, the Antichrist is alive and well in the personage of the papacy today. No doubt about it. And the Antichrist, of course, has his shadow government that was developed for him by, of course, Satan. I mean, all of these things have get their power from the dragon. All of these anti-Christian powers, they all get their power from the dragon But this counter-reformation, because the Reformation, if you read something like the history of Protestantism, which I'm just finished volume two, I'm going to begin volume three, and I've read both at least twice, and I'm sure I'll read them again, but I'm going to read the Hori Apocalyptic again first, as soon as I finish volume three of the history of Protestantism, because they're so closely tied together. See, the history of Protestantism is uh, by J. A. Wiley or James A. Wiley, A Massive History of Protestantism. It was published in 1878 and covers the beginning of Christianity to the glorious revolution in the great, in Great Britain of 1688 in three volumes. Of course, the glorious revolution of 1688 in Great Britain was, as E. B. Eliot told us, in his Hori Apocalyptica, that was, there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the kingdom fell. Yeah, that's, that's from the Revelation. And a tenth of the what kingdom? Well, there were ten horns, weren't there? And a tenth of the king of that ten horned kingdom fell. What did it fall away from? Well, it fell away from the papacy. It fell away from the Antichrist kingdom during its 1260 year reign. 1688, wouldn't that be during the 1260-year reign of the Antichrist when the tenth of the kingdom fell away? So the British Isles and, and explicitly England fell away and became Protestant. A tenth of the kingdom fell. Then history, prophecy, history is told in advance and it was fulfilled. Remember, John wrote, because Christ told him the things which must shortly come to pass and they did shortly come to pass in that second century, shortly after 95 or 6 AD when the prophecy was given. So it would shortly come to pass in the second century, and it did. If you read the Hori Apocalyptica or, or even uh, the last prophecy, that abridgment of the Hori Apocalyptica, you can verify it all for yourself and you can and just read history. Go, yeah, well, that, that's true. You know, this is, this, I must consider this as a viable interpretation for prophecy because it fulfills it's fulfilled in history 
And that's how we know that our prophecy and our method of interpreting prophecy is true because it has continually been, been fulfilled in history. Just like all of the, from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, um, Adam and Eve received a prophecy after the fall. And the prophecy was the seed of the woman. It was a prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. Yeah. And it was fulfilled in history. And once Israel was a nation and the prophets uh, rose up and, and God started prophesying to the nation, he would give them the prophecy it would fulfill in their history. Some of the prophecies were to be fulfilled later. Some of them still be, be fulfilled in further history. All of the prophecies given, all of the promises made to Israel through all of its prophets, especially the ones dealing with the resurrection and and the um, and, and, you know after death being raised from the dead, uh, all of it fulfilled in Christ. Christ fulfilled. There's nothing further for Israel to be fulfilled except what will be fulfilled in Christ in the future and has been fulfilled in Christ from his first appearance. All of the promises that God made to Israel are fulfilled in Christ or remain to be fulfilled in Christ. The only difference is the church now gets to share in all of the promises that were made to the elect of Israel. And I should say the elect of the church because there is the nominal church there is the visible church on earth and the greatest part of the visible church on earth is is most more than two billion adherents to the universal roman church they are part of the visible church on earth and in in that visible church on earth even god has some of his elect in there because he says he does otherwise he wouldn't say come out of her my people now, I'm not just saying that that's referring to the Roman church when Christ says in the Revelation, come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins and her judgments. Right? I'm not saying that by myself, but I'm joining in the elect of the ages going back six, seven hundred years from the pre-Reformation church that led to the Reformation who proclaimed that the Roman Catholic Church was that great apostasy of whom God proclaimed, come out over my people. And they heard it then. Many of them heard it then and came out. And many are still coming out today. Many, Some of our uh, contributors to First Amendment Radio are Protestant, protestant, truly protesting Christians against evil, the evils of the anti-Christian church and the man of sin some of us were catholics i was born a catholic my father and mother were catholic i was orphaned and placed into catholic charities of course i never never truly became a catholic as i never believed in the catholic church for some reason nothing ever got through <laughs> for all those hours of sitting at mass doesn't I can't remember them ever touching me or or ever learning anything that had any implication in my life. I mean, my first taste of the true word of life was after I was done and on my own and 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 done with the Catholic Church. And someone gave me a Bible and I started reading it, a King James Bible, and I started reading it. Then. I understood the gospel. Then the Spirit of God offered me an adoption. I can't say I really understood what I was reading very well. It was the Spirit of God that called me, that elected me. It was, it was not, I mean, I wasn't good. <laughs> I, I wasn't something special. I had any special understanding. I, I had a special ignorance if I, the way I remember it. I understood nothing. <laughs> God chose me and elected me because of his own mercy and his own grace. Nothing that I did. He didn't call me because I was truly looking. 
I just started to read the book. And he called me and offered me the adoption, and I accepted, even though I didn't have a, hardly a clue what it meant. Yes, and so it's been quite a journey, and that was, so let's see, 40, uh, 44, four, uh, 46 years ago. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. And uh, it's been a pretty rocky road for me because um, I'm a hard learner. Yeah. It's like a lot of falling down going on back there, especially at the beginning and through the middle of it. <laughs> it kind of seems kind of funny to me. I'm, after 40 years, I just uh, feel like I'm just beginning to learn how to walk. And I, I need another 40 years, Lord. Yeah. I want to keep doing this, especially if I can bring others and, and, uh, and reach your elect with your word so they can open the eyes and uh, help to feed those that are truly hungering for the truth as revealed by your Holy Spirit and have a hunger and a thirst for eternal life. You know, like Paul said, keep your eye on the prize. That's it. The prize is beyond the grave. It's not this life. This life is but a vapor. I mean, here I am. I'm not in the beginning or of my life. I'm not in the morning or even the afternoon. I'm sure it's evening, you know. It may be the beginning of the evening of my life, and I hope it is, because many people don't even live to be as old as I am right now. And many, and not, and most don't live to be much older than I am right now. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, share something here on my website. If you go to my website, and uh, you'll see there. Let me put that on the screen. If you go to my website, it kind of looks like this. And in the left-hand column, there are trending articles. And the two most popular articles, of course, are The Empire of the City, the unholy trinity that rules the world here and then what year is it is the second one that's what i want to talk about the one what year is it so if you click on that it takes you to this posting here and <clears throat> you'll see a summary chart there which if you click on that summary chart it will blow up full size and you can always go back hit your back button to go back but there it is and you can see that um, uh, this what year is it is, is the idea of it is to what year is it from creation and to get a Bible derived chronology. And that's what I've done here. And you'll see in this summary chart, if you go down below, uh, you'll see I've been studying. Okay. Oh, yeah. In the pages of this booklet or this posting here, you will find every biblical reference needed to verify what this summary chart reveals. What you do with this information is between you and the Almighty. So anyway, it's all outlined. And I started this about, oh, 20, 2008, and I didn't really finish it till about 2013, uh, going through it with the help of many of my listeners and readers and, and, uh, <clears throat> to, to get this down. I haven't been able to update it since since about then. So I think we pretty much nailed it here as to um, it will be about the year 2055 that the, the sixth millennium will come to an end and the seventh millennium from creation will begin. And we get, of course, this timeline from the Genesis creation uh, from the Bible itself and it leads us up to the time of Christ by the 69 weeks unto Messiah, the, the, the biblical prophecy. And all of these things are dated in, in history and, and verified. And so then we jump to the Roman calendar from there because the Roman calendar has been the calendar that has been followed since then. And you can see all the details, even the Roman calendar era and what we had to do to verify that uh, during that era. And from there, we go from creation, and we realize that right now, about 2045, I mean, 20, 2000 CE was 5945. So the year 2000 was about the year 5945, leaving 55 years, or till 2055 here, uh, 
about 2055. I don't know the day or the hour, definitely. I'm not even sure about the month or the year, but I'm going to say a three-year window is as close as I can get, as close as I really care to get. I mean, I, I mean I'll be lucky. Well, I'll be blessed, I should say. I correct myself there. <laughs> I'm not relying on luck at all. But I, I will be blessed. And, you know, I've asked the Almighty to let me live that long. But, you know, I don't want to be living in pain or, or diminished capacity when it comes either. So, because I was born before this year here. <laughs> yeah, going way back. So, I have to live to be about 100 years old to make it to 2055. I'll just put it that way. And not many people do, but some people do and some people don't. And I guess most people don't. So I don't know. Just, you know, the Almighty hasn't promised me anything yet, but I would be, like to be living when he, when the actual true resurrection, no rapture, I'm not falling for that nonsense. When they start building the temple over there, don't expect to be raptured away. Expect an even greater deception. <laughs> You've already believed one deception if you believe that you're going to be raptured before some seven year period when the entire calamity of the, of the book of Revelation is going to ensue. So definitely God doesn't want you there. That's part of their deception. You know, uh, nobody wants, but it's all a lie. It's there to deceive you, to get you to accept their false antichrist scenario to vindicate the Roman Catholic Church from being the great apostasy foretold and the papacy from being the man of sin, the seed of the Antichrist, as foretold and confirmed by the Refor Reformation and Pre-Reformation Fathers five, six hundred, seven hundred years ago. Okay, I guess we're done with our series, The Shadow Government Works for the Antichrist. May the Almighty bless you and keep you as you continue to walk in his kingdom day by day until he returns. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, 
EPUB or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's crossthebordered.org.